found this. Uh, just write your name on it. And then if, uh, if someone else that you know is interested in going, um, write their name on it too. Just, I'm gonna kind of, we're gonna start kind of keeping a, a list. Uh, this doesn't, this doesn't commit you to anything. It's just, yeah, you just have to, uh, just, this is just kind of a, a list that we start. Um, basically what it will do is probably put you on an email list and we'll send out updates. So, um, Erin Kane was supposed to be here, but she's not here. Anyway, pass that around, put your name on it, please. Yes, sir. Let me see if Aaron. I did say in that email I said this room, correct? Yes, I got that every time. Yeah. Well, um, I was going to have Aaron start. Aaron Kane. Oh, there she is. Hello, George. So this you just kind of right entering when he's firing. Yeah. Just as I said, your name So Aaron is from um, IPO office. If you don't know Aaron, kind um, of runs the show over there. I think that's the. Um, she's extremely helpful in um, managing this 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 course. Uh, getting all the logistics set up behind the scenes uh, while we're in country. She saves us by getting us home. Uh, the last time we went was uh, quite the experience. Yes, the polar vortex was um, messing up our flights, uh, which I'll, I'll just go ahead and just talk about that right now so I don't forget. Uh, when you travel, and when you travel long distances on an airplane, you have to expect some type of hiccup, right? Mm -hmm. And in, in particular, when you travel with a group of people, um, there's a really, really good chance that something will go awry, like luggage doesn't show up, or um, someone might get sick, or um, might lose their passport, right? I mean, all these different things that can that can go um, maybe not as planned. So I guess my first uh, recommendation is that you have to be pretty flexible um, in, in traveling. So um, anyway, all right. So Aaron, I have you first uh, on my agenda. So turning it over to you. Yeah, so I'm just going to um, share this little one page. The front is going to be the most useful to me as far as some of the pricing that we have my contact info, where you can find me, when you can find me there, um, and some scholarship info too. There is a scholarship availability through Aussie, the J term program. A lot of you guys are lucky to have been an answer to you. We did this fancy course reveal in early February where we talked about all of our classes that were coming out, but getting the behind the scenes, we'll share everything. <laughs> You really thought I was going to miss this? <laughs> no. Uh, so you can see, like, some of this information will be pertinent to you, just like your break stuff and um, mm -hmm. things that have already passed. So that top site is where you're going to find program info once it becomes updated for this course. That's where you'll actually apply to mm -hmm. it. Hi, Ellen. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Ellen. So when you hey, go to this hey, site, you would. Um, Search for special mm -hmm. needs to find some extra course info. However, that's going to go the most of it where you're here. And then that's where you physically will find it. Down below, you can see where that scholarship info is. So the top one, you all have access to this. It doesn't matter what kind of age you get to be here, if you have federal grants, whatever. That first Aussie scholarship is open to everybody. And then the last one, the uh, Gilman Scholarship application, would be open to any students who are Fed eligible. So if you are, you'll get an email from me a couple times a year, and you'll know that, and I can help you with an extra scholarship for that. Um, we make it pretty easy for students to travel with faculty. So you'll have somebody here that's going to tell you all the ins and outs and the details. Um, I don't know if Matt can tell you about her experience. Um, 
At this point, we don't have an expected cost, but we do have a range for the last time that it went. So the in country range last time that it went was about 3,800 to 4,100 for the in country portion. Airfare has sometimes been booked separately, kind of depending on your own preference, because students traveling to Norway can sometimes want a little bit more flexibility to travel before and after. Uh, and that's something that I can help arrange too. So as you know, you always apply for your January classes with your fall semester classes in the spring. So that's when this will open and kind of the timeline will follow with that as well. It'll be a priority deadline. And some of the OGLA classes do fill during that priority deadline. So if this is something that's really important to you, you want to make sure to get on this outside application at the same time because we want to make sure that Able to attend. Does anyone have any questions about some of those logistics? So the cost that was for easy numbers, yeah. four thousand dollars, does not include flight, right? So we typically find a flight. I know you don't like me to throw out numbers, but I would I would say a thousand dollars, maybe to fourteen hundred dollars for a flight. Okay, so we're up to we're up over five thousand dollars, all right, and then we haven't we haven't gotten to we'll get to the conversation about extra costs. So just to when you go home for Thanksgiving, you want to have the conversation whether you want to have it over turkey or you want to wait till after or do it before, depending on the mood of your parents, right? So it's all about uh, what kind of mood they're in. Get them when they're in good mood, and we'll like to open up that checkbook. <laughs> And also know that you can apply for that when it opens in the spring and not have any financial repercussions until early next fall. So we do ask for a deposit of $500 with the application. That's fully refundable until September 15th. So if you need, you know, the summer, this is how much money you can make or to do a couple of these um, scholarship applications to see how much um, extra money you can kind of get towards it, that's okay. Because up until September 15th, you can withdraw out of the course without any penalties. And with the course um, deposit, too, we're pretty flexible on that. So it's a nice way to show your commitment to the course. Um, but if it is just not something you're able to do, just communicate it with me, and then I can arrange that with the business office so you don't have to see it this way. We try to be as flexible as possible just because we want you to be able to have this opportunity if you can. Is studio abroad information on, on there? So uh, not the exact course application, but it's that top link. If you go to this and you go to the program tab at the top and just type in Spicy Lady, it's going to show as soon as they officially open in February. So when you go now, you probably won't see anything. But okay. <laughs> And in early February, when all the courses open for January 2021, they will be able to see all that. Also, know that when we are making the site easier, so when you go to it and log in, you don't need an outside password. It is just going to be exactly what you use for your Augie credentials for your Augie portal. So when you register for the course, you're going to have to register it, go on yeah. Studio Abroad, get on IPO's radar, and then you're also going to do it as you would with any other course on your academic planner. Okay. And there'll be two options for SPED 280, Section A and Section B, I'm guessing, uh, and, and Section B will probably be no way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. Questions? So how soon do we get the passport? Yeah, I know you had to sign up for the passport, but if you have your own passport, do you have to do it again? 
if it's still valid, it has to be valid for six months past the time you would get back. So if your passport is going to expire in April of 2021, it wouldn't be six months past the end of January. So be careful with that. Um, yeah. And that's something that will be on the application too. It's a little reminder. So if you have a passport already, just check it. Make sure you know the expiration date. If you don't have a passport, you should definitely apply for one before you're ready to go anyway. Awesome. Yeah, so if we already went on a J term trip before, do we have a shorter application to fill out or is it the same? It's pretty much the same, um, but it's just going to be an update on um, what year you are, what your current GPA is, um, your advisor is likely the same, and then this one will just have a really short, it asks for an essay, but an essay in this case isn't academic, it's just a short response as to why you'd like to participate in this course. It's going to be thoughtful on it because if there are a ton of applicants, that is going to be something that your course leader can look at to determine like who is the most committed or the most interested in that trait. Yeah. So don't put, yeah. I just want Norwegian chocolate. <laughs> Which is bad. It's yeah, so it's it's totally bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we had a last time. Your interest, your your presence here today, to help. So, stay engaged. This is the message there. Okay, so um, I kind of um, have this month at a glance, and as I think most of you know, there's probably a, 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 a there's a small chance that I'll be going on on uh, this course, but uh, your course leader is going to be Dr. Cook. She's actually going to be over there. Uh, this January, yeah. scooping trotting it around. Out. Yeah, scooping it out. Trotting around. So she's going to visit some of these places um, that I'm going to tell you about. Um, and so I kind of have this on the back of this. I kind of just gave you a just a calendar to look at. This is kind of how I visualize um, uh, the course. And so all of these dates that I'm going to throw out, throw out at you are just purely tentative. Right now, because when we look at flights, we look at when we might be able to get a cheaper flight if we leave on a different day, those kinds of things. So, generally speaking, you will probably depart for Norway, I'm guessing, on Saturday the 3rd or maybe Monday the 4th. Again, just around that time period. Okay. Um, Norway is, Oslo is seven hours ahead. So, you actually depart the States. On let's say Sunday, and then when you arrive in Oslo, it's Monday. All right. Um, so um, let's. Uh, so we spend probably two to three days in Oslo, kind of um, taking in the culture of Norway. Uh, they have lots of museums. We visit a lot of those. A lot of those museums were. So we typically fly through Amsterdam down the Netherlands, and then we come up to Oslo right here, right? So, uh, oh, there's the Opera House, which is new. So uh, this is the uh, Oslo Fjord. Uh, this is the, the Opera House, which uh, in the dead of winter, we walked all the way up to the top. Pretty cool, kind of a nice view. Um, and so we basically bop around Oslo for a couple days. There's Viking Ship Museum. Um, there's uh, City Hall, which is where they hold the Nobel Peace Prize um, uh, ceremony. Um, so we, we spend a lot of time in Oslo. Um, and it, have any of you been to Norway other than Lizzie? Aaron? Lizzie, you been to Norway? You been to Oslo? Why is he and then once we once we spend a couple days there, then we we break into our individual sites, and that's kind of what I want to 
um, talk about. So one of the sites, my first site is Selva, um, which is, uh, there's a residential school there called Pedermore Set, and that's uh, what the Norwegians call a Folke High School, which is a gap year. So a lot of Norwegian high school graduates take a year between high school and what they call university, like a gap year. And there's 70 plus Folke High School is scattered throughout Norway. And they all have a theme, um, fine arts, could be a sport, cross country skiing, and football. Uh, this particular Folke, this particular Folke High School, Petter Morset, um, has the theme of inclusion. And so half of the students um, that, that take this gap year um, at Petter Morset, I'm going to, so we're, I'm, Zooming out, and we're going to go north all the way up in the Trondheim area. So Trondheim, Fjordal, and then here is where uh, Petter Morset is. Nice little picture of this. Uh, and it's a residential facility. So those of you that choose to go to uh, Petter Morset, you will be um, Staying in the same facilities that the students stay in, um, you will eat there. Um, you, it's, it's all in one, uh, several acres. Um, I wonder if I can pull up more. Yeah, so um, it's in a really pretty part of the country. There's a massive lake uh, that's uh, right next to it. I wish they would show. Yeah, there's kind of. From above, there's the lake. Um, and the curriculum at this school is super, super chill. Um, they have jewelry making, they have a drone program, arts and crafts, uh, outdoor education. And so you get to choose what you want to do each day. And it's very, very, there's no grades that the students get. Um, they're there to just be included. I would say most of the students with disabilities are um, on the spectrum or with Down syndrome. I think the majority of the students are. Um, and so you just spend the day hanging out with them. You get to choose what you want to do, arts and crafts. Uh, you're outside a lot. Um, they have a, a really, really cool horse program. Uh, that you can uh, participate in, and that's part of their curriculum, um, taking care of horses, learning how to ride horses. Um, I was able to ride, um, it's, no, no, I'm not going to be able to remember the name of the horse. They have a bunch of them. They, they look, they're a smaller version of a Belgian, and it's the Norwegian version of the Belgian horse, um, and they run particularly well in the snow. Imagine that. Um, and so, um, in, in this area, they get a bunch of snow, and so riding a horse through like three or four feet of snow is pretty amazing. So that's um, Petter Morset Polka High School. Questions about that? That's one option. And then another option is um, Hamar. So it's, we're just north of Oslo. So this is a train ride from Oslo, approximately two hour train ride. The folks that are gonna go up to, um, the, the airport is actually uh, in Skjordo. They call it the Trondheim airport, but it's actually not in Trondheim. It, uh, it took me three times going to Norway before I actually figured that out, by the way. Um, that's, a, that's a me problem. Um, <laughs> So you, this is a flight from Oslo. Those of you that are going to go to um, Petter Morset will, will pitch on a plane and fly you up there, more than likely, I'm guessing. It's a really long train ride. Um, uh, and then the folks that are going to go to Hamar um, is, a, is, a, is a really pretty train ride, train ride that follows this lake. This is a massive, massive lake, and a train follows that through the, through the mountains. It's really cool. So this is Hamar. Um, 
in Hamar is more of a traditional school where you're going to be, there's Inland University, which I think I have in my notes, um, uh, in Hamar, and they have a teacher ed program, they have college students, it's a college kind of town, and so you will stay in the dorms, and then you will um, more than likely walk through to your school. And they have three, what they call upper secondary schools, eighth through 10th grade, they call them class. Um, and so you will go to one of those schools and work with the students in that school each day, okay? Uh, so staying in the dorms, you're going to be able, you're going to be responsible for preparing your own meals, um, breakfast, and uh, you call it supper or dinner. We call the, the evening meal. Your um, your lunch sometimes will be provided at the school if you want to eat at lunch at the school, or a lot of the students would also um, prepare their lunch and bring a, a sack lunch to school. Okay. As, as I'm talking about this, things may change. Kathleen might get there, and for example, we've made a, a new connection with a special ed professor. Um, at Inland University at, in the Lillehammer campus, which I need to get you her name. Um, they're just starting a special ed program there. They haven't really had special education there, uh, which is why I, we chose to go there to help them kind of figure out um, how to work with these individuals with disabilities. Um, and so there could be more opportunities, more schools in Hamar to visit. And Learden is no longer in the school system. So, yeah. But questions about Hamar? And then we head over to the west coast of Norway, uh, which is extremely beautiful. These are the postcards that you all see when you see. So we, I've, I've taken two um, groups of students over to Norway. The first group, we did not have a West Coast site. Uh, this last group, Lizzie was fortunate enough to be um, in the two students, one of the two students that went to um, our friends who live in Wilsonfjord. Uh, Svein Carlos and Benta um, went to Augie. They both ran track at Augie. Um, and they, um, Svein Carlos is a teacher, and Benta is also a teacher. Um, the more of a, what's that? The principal. Well, once a teacher, always a teacher. They turned to the dark side and became principals. Um, and so they live in Hosenfjorden, and I know this has changed, Lizzie, but. Um, and Carlos was the principal at a school in San. Even in the winter time, it's beautiful. Different kind of beautiful, but still beautiful. Um, and now he's in. So. Lizzie, every morning, <laughs> would get up and, and go with San Carlos, and they travel basically over the mountains. There was two routes. You could go around the mountains or over the mountains. And when I flew, I flew into Howison, they picked me up and, and we went and took this route around the mountains. I got car sick. And then, yeah, we all got car sick the first time. Um, I, don't, I don't tell you that to, to deter you from going there. Um, but at this placement, it's more than likely, again, this is going to change because my Carlos has changed schools, but um, it, you're, you're staying with Swine Carlos and Benta in their home with their three kids, all right? And if I gave Lizzie the microphone, we'd be here till about midnight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, safe to say uh, Lizzie has uh, now become their adopted daughter. Um, Lizzie had a really good experience. Rachel Ochoa was there also, but Lizzie and Rachel lived in the house. They did whatever the Gilles did. They own, they literally own, so this is this is where Hosenfjord is. 
they own hundreds and hundreds of acres on and around this fjord. In fact, they call the fjord theirs. It's their fjord. And so uh, it's 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 out of it's it's literally out of a, a postcard. Uh, they live at the end of the fjord. Their farm is there. They have sheep. They have cattle. They have. He has drones that he sends up to find out where his sheep are. Um, he has drones that he sends up to find out where the moose is so we can go shoot it, which I think is extremely unsportsmanlike. Uh, welcome to 2018. I mean, you enjoyed eating it, so you can't. Uh, right, I did. I did. Um, but anyway, that's um, the west coast of Norway, and close to Fjorden and Sand. And um, you typically fly into. Uh, either Stavanger or or uh, Haugesund. Most of you have probably heard of Bergen, uh, which is a popular West Coast uh, city in Norway. That's where you see a lot of the um, oh, like the different colored houses along the fjords. That's Bergen is typically where you see the the pictures of those. All right, and then um, I have what do I have next? Yeah, so home of the 1994 Winter Olympics, which is really cool. Uh, Lillehammer is actually a, a town. There's no ski resort in Lillehammer. Actually, they have ski resorts kind of up the um, north of Lillehammer. They, have, they don't have massive ski resorts like we do. These huge, big stack. They have little ones, and they're just kind of scattered up the mountain. Um, what we do is we meet for one weekend. We meet um, other students from Augustana, and, and most likely the nursing students. I don't know if there's going to be no, the choir is going to be there too. Be a, a really large group. We'll all converge on Lillehammer. We all stay at the same hotel, and you can downhill ski, cross country ski, or none of the above. Um, you can go shopping. They have a cool little Main Street, Lillehammer. Go shopping um, for a Saturday and a Sunday. So you can ski both days, whether it's cross country or downhill. You can just relax. You're not forced to do anything. Okay. Now, I'm saying all this assuming that they're going to try to do the same thing. The first time we went, we all were at our sites. Uh, so we, we went to Oslo. And then we all broke off and went to our sites. And then the very last weekend of, of, of the uh, course, we met in, in Lillehammer. And then from Lillehammer, we went back to Oslo, spent a day or two in Oslo, and then went home. The second time we went, we, we met, we did the Lillehammer experience uh, one of the middle weekends. So we went to our sites, we came to Lillehammer, we went back to our sites, we came back to Oslo. That make sense? So, um, it kind of depends on the schedules of all the different groups that will be there as to when you go to Lohan. Okay. Questions? Okay, so based on what site you go to, is the cost per return different? Yeah, so those of you that are going to be preparing your meals, your own meals, um, in Hamar, you'll have, we'll give you like an allowance of, of kroners to buy food. It's all included. Um, yep, yep. All of the, the required, I guess I'll call it the required travel, um, is will be included in the in the cost. You decide, and, and well, you know what? I'll get to that. I don't want to get off task here, so we'll keep kind of. So I, I made this for me, so I can stay on task. So now we're to letter C, miscellaneous costs. So Norway is very. Um, uh, it's a very safe place. So a lot of the courses are, are, are J-term courses. Um, some of the countries we're going to are not very safe, so we have a little bit more serious conversation about safety. But Norway is, generally speaking, very safe. 
I used my credit card. When I was going to buy a gift for someone, when I was going to buy something for me or something that was extra cost, they take they take MasterCard and Visa. And, and, and then you get the choice of whether you want to you want to get charged in kroners or US dollars. So what does it look like if you if you have like five dollars example, what is it transferred to the emerging region? The exchange rate? Yeah. Is based well, I don't even know what it is now. You know what it is now? It's about yeah, it's about it's about I typically say about eighty percent of the dollar is kind of the, the figure that I go with. So that being said, if you have like a something that you want to buy, like let's say you want to buy a new ski coat because you're going to be skiing in Wellhammer. So actually you can buy one there and you can get a better price for it since the dollar is stronger. Does that make sense? So, okay, so you can buy most anything with US dollars. They're not going to be concerned about that? Nope. I've, I've always asked, well, how much should I get in kroners? And I, 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 you can get, if you want, just to have kroners, you can get like a couple hundred kroners. But you don't, really don't need them. Everywhere you go, they're going to take uh, a credit card. You can't pay with U.S. dollars. If you're going to pay cash, it's got to be in kroners. But everywhere you're going to go, they're going to take a credit card or debit card. 11 cents. Yeah, one crone. Oh, one crone is eleven cents. Yeah. Right now. Ninety yeah. percent. The only thing you will use cash for is some bathrooms or flyer. Good point. Yeah, there's some some uh, public restrooms you have to pay for, and a lot of those actually have. A credit card uh -huh. slot, but some of them don't. And in that case, then you just don't go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, food. Food's expensive. Alcohol, expensive. Okay, so there will be some meals that you're going to have to pay for. Out of your own pocket. And so, food is expensive. Um, but that's about the only thing I can tell you is, I don't know, a, a cheeseburger is probably, I don't know, nine bucks maybe, eight bucks. Plus, really more expensive. If you want to bring extra money for gifts to go shopping, things like that, that'll be extra. And then transportation. So you have a free weekend, right? Um, uh, there's, let's say, six of you are in Hamar, and it's Friday, and you're done at your school, and you've got all weekend. What are you going to do? You can hop on a train and go train. up north. Uh, you can hop on a flight and go to London. <laughs> Not. You can hop on a flight and go to Amsterdam. Uh, you can hop on a train and go to Stockholm, Sweden. Okay? I'll encourage you to do that. While you're there, might as well, right? Um, of course, we will need to know of your plans <laughs> and your whereabouts. Um, and, and I don't know, Aaron, and if maybe you guys yeah. disagree with what I'm saying, please speak up. But my... my, um, my Kind of message is take it in. We want you flying really far away now. I'd rather be safe, sure you, but you have the opportunity to do it. So those of you that are in uh, in Sobu, it's a 45 minute bus ride up to Trondheim. Trondheim is a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, there's lots of architecture there. It's on the water. Um, you will probably go up to Trondheim. So when you're there for a day, you're going to need to eat, and so you're going to have to have some money for food, right? Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, so one of the things we have a lot of fun in this way is that, you know, who is going to attend, where your location is going to be, and then we think of a lot more accurate estimates of what we might be able to do without any cost to do, but anything is meant to sort of the course, like your transportation to the country, your life. 
of the country and the regional showing your placement, things like that, will be uh, your course cost. And then there's some of those kinds of things. Another thing, um, depending on the group, too, this is kind of we've done per group to figure out um, what everybody wants to do, is you can either book an entire group of aircraft for everybody in and out on the same flight. Uh, so you're, you're traveling all together. But oh, there have been people in the past that have wanted to travel either before or after the course, and that's a possibility too. We just have, we'll communicate a lot of this to you in early fall as we're putting all these people together. But it is, like Matt said, you're already there, and it's much cheaper to travel once you're in Europe than it is to travel back to Europe. Um, so if it's an opportunity that you're able to pay for, we'll work. The, the message, the seriousness of this is, this is not a vacation, right? You're, you're, you're on a course. You're, you're, you're getting free credits for this course. And so we need to treat it like that, okay? Is it going to be fun? It's going to be a blast. There's a ton of fun. But there's also, a, a, we'll call it a business part of it where it's, it's serious. So we need that act professional, right? Um, the, the, we need to not act like your stereotypical American when we're traveling to other countries. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we had a little bit of a joke uh, as we were on, on this course uh, that if you did say the T word, you put a dollar in the kitty. Right? And then at the end of the course, depending how much money was in there, we use that, well, maybe for a night out in the town. Or maybe shots for Chloe. I, don't know. <laughs> I did get iced a couple times. Um, the drinking age, uh, I meant to talk about that in the uh, alcohol. Um, I'm not in, don't, please don't, I'm not encouraging drinking. Um, the drinking age is 19 after. And, but then what's the, what's the rule about at what time they essentially shoo out all the 19 year olds and 20 year olds? I don't think there's a time. I think there's just supposed to say 23 and up. The Basically, their concern is they're serving alcohol. They're serving, you know, alcohol and beer and wine, and they're they don't want the nineteen year olds going. Oh, that's kind of Yeah, I didn't know. Is that what that is? Yeah. We got a few people leave up So there were a couple times where I I'd, I'd go into the bar and I'd say, hey, I, I've got um, a professor back in the states, and I've got my students with me. Some of them are. 19 and some of them are 21. Will you will you let us in here? Wink, wink. Wink, wink. Okay. And and sometimes they would say, absolutely, come on in. We just want you to sit over here in this area together. Great. So we did. And we ended up playing some drinking games. I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you know. Well, that's that's part of that's part of the. You will. I will. 
Safety. Nobody goes anywhere alone. Okay. For sure, two people, and I would recommend three. Okay. Again, we don't have to worry about it that much because we're in Norway. It's a very, very safe country. But just you can't go anywhere alone. If you go somewhere, like you need to go somewhere alone, you can't find anybody to go with you. You got to run to the to the convenience store to pick up some toothpaste, and it's two blocks away. All right. That just let somebody know that you're doing that. It's a small example. But the bottom line is, we just we need to know where where you're going. Don't let the train Okay. Lastly, what to pack? And I guess I'm specifically talking about clothing, right? So your your teaching your your professional attire when you're in schools differs. If you're at Petter Morset, super relaxed, you're going to be taking boots off, putting boots on, putting snow pants on, taking them off. It's very very relaxed, and so. Something like Kate is wearing here is, is very accessible for everyone. Okay. Girls, does that give you an idea? Okay. Um, yeah. These sweats probably or, or yeah. Um, if you're in Hamar, it's going to be a little bit more professional. Generally speaking, though, Norwegian and, and their teachers are they you. Will be surprised at what they wear. I sometimes when I go into schools in here, what you can wear. But you're going to err on the side. Those of you that are in Hamar, you're going to err on the side of dressing more professional. So what that look like? Is that like khaki in your culture? Yes. Okay. Yep. Do any of you need any more explanation on what I mean? What you would wear to do a practicum here, right? In a school. Yeah, I'll, I'll get there. That's a good point. That's a good point. Thank you. Um, and then the same uh, for Hosen Purity. You're going to be in a school, you're going to want to be dressed more professionally. Weekends outside of the classroom, warm. Okay, lots of layers. I recommend everybody buy a pair of um, boots. I, I call them um, like like Timberland. You know where 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 they're really comfortable. You can because you're gonna walk. You walk a lot. In, in when we're in Oslo. Um, we log lots and lots of miles and we walk lots of places. So you're going to want to wear, um, yeah, I can. You know what I, when I say like a Timberland boot, it's, it's waterproof, um, like these, except probably higher. These are water, but does everyone understand what I'm kind of describing? Um, they're like, they have like big boots for your like. Who's there? How tall? Yep. So you don't get drenched. Not or... tall, just just a little higher. Okay, and you so can, like can be And you can wear those in the school, right? You can wear those walking. You can wear those pretty much anywhere. And you'll see the same in, in the Norwegian I'll be wearing. Similar. I would recommend bringing a pair of house shoes. Thank you. In particular, those of you that are at Petter Morset, everybody know what Lizzie means by a pair of house shoes? Like slippers? They could be slippers, but just a pair of shoes dedicated to staying inside and not dirty. So, sorry, Kate, I keep picking on you. Kate wants to bend and judge those with her house shoes, but she never wears them outside. Those are her house shoes. So you're going to wear them in the hotel, you're going to wear them in the house that you're staying in. You don't want to wear your boots, you can wear them in school. And then 
I always so if if I wore this, I would I would feel comfortable wearing wearing what I have on right now into a school. Um, other than the fact that I would have a pair of um, what do you call them? A belt and layer, a base layer, long underwear. Norwegian sweater when you're there. Yeah, why? Those can be expensive too. How much? Well, there's all different. There's a price range. You can the good ones though. You're gonna want to get a quality Norwegian sweater. A couple hundred dollars probably. All right. Who is fifty percent or more in? Yeah. Money, okay. Okay. Who's seventy-five percent or more in? I am. Yeah. All right. Just, just kind of giving you. A, anybody one hundred percent in? How many what? Humans? Did you say? That? <laughs> I love it. Um, it. We have to like minimum. We probably have to get. Probably six or seven for the course to actually go, and then kind of depends up to of le leaning on Aaron here. Yeah, do household chores and get chip in, like enjoy the dining room. The 
I'm trying to make another connection in uh, Yordal. We have a um, teacher there. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. So this could all change. These sites could, we could add to it, depending on what's going on in uh, Benton and Svein Carlos's world. We may not be there. We'll see. Okay. What's the app you use? Duolingo. But uh, my youngest little brother, his one English sentence is, can I have some milk, please? <laughs> and you can only do so much with him. What are the names of the kids? Uh, Mura, David, and Ula Rabido. Mura just turned 10, David is 9, his friend is Zeke, and Ula Rabido is 7. So fine, fine Carlos uh, is originally from Colombia, was adopted. So by a Norwegian family. And, well, he does not look Norwegian. <laughs> And what did you have to bring them? Did you bring them Rice Krispies? Rice Krispies and butterscotch. <laughs> Yeah. So let, does he establish a relationship with them via Facebook, I believe, and you started yeah. FaceTiming them six, eight months prior to going and got to meet the kids. And um, so she, she was she was all ready to roll when she <laughs> funny story, we're we're all we're all um, so we're at the end of the month. We're all gonna be back in Oslo to meet to go home. We're gonna spend Two and a half days in, in Oslo. It was three. Three days in Oslo. It was the weekend. And Lizzie, Lizzie sent me a text. It's like, is it okay if I just? I think you 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 were joking. You're like, what if I don't show up at the Oslo airport to go back to the states? I'm like, haha, that's funny. And then the conversation basically led to that she wanted to stay a couple more days um, in Osa Jordan with with uh, the family um, and. I found out later that there was a little bit of expense to changing the flight out of Haugesen to Oslo. And of course, my Carlos and Benta uh, picked up that um, fee to change the flight. I think. To be fair, we tried. Yeah. We tried to buy it, but they wouldn't let us stay. So she ended up spending another basically two days um, with, with them because she just didn't want to leave. And I cried like a baby when I left. <laughs> Every time. That's yeah. I flew by myself from Iceland. We rerouted through Iceland too. Yeah, to Canada and then to the US. Scariest experience of my life. Yeah, to Indianapolis where I was making a All good? You know where my office is, is. If you have any questions, pop in any time. I will send uh, this meeting link in that same.